After genocides in Burundi and Rwanda, many Hutu and Tutsis fled into the east of Zaire, which at the time was ruled by Mobutu. But they often clashed with each other, so to defend his fellow Tutsis, the new president of Rwanda, Kagame, sent troops across the border. There, the Rwandans helped form a Tutsi rebel army, the AFDL, and were joined by the Ugandans under Museveni. Together they marched west while President Dos Santos of Angola also moved on Zaire. So Mobutu fled in 1997 and Laurent Desiree Kabila was made the new president and the country was renamed the Democratic Republic of Congo. Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, well yeah, it's called that, but it's also called the DRC, Congo Kinshasa, or simply just the Congo. Find out more in my video I just made comparing the Democratic Republic of the Congo and the Republic of the Congo. Confused yet? Yeah, me too. Check out my video to be less confused. However, the Rwandans kept troops inside the capital and he began to look like a puppet ruler. So, trying to assert his independence, he ordered that the Rwandans leave in late July 1998. But the Rwandans had anticipated this and planned for a second invasion. So, along with Uganda again, they supported a new rebel army group, Rally for Congolese Democracy. Then, in August, they flew troops to Katona in the west and quickly seized the ports like Matadi. The capital of Kinshasa was thrown into chaos and many Tutsis were killed for their alleged allegiance with the rebels. But Zimbabwe's Robert Mugabe sent troops to aid the president and halt the rebels. The Namibians also sent aid to Congo and so too did Dos Santos, whose Angolan troops quickly took back Katona on the 22nd of August. Now cut off from the coast, the RCD tried to quickly capture Kinshasa but were driven back after heavy fighting. So the Rwandan troops under Karebi then fled to Maguela do Zombo in Angola. There they captured the airport and, after fighting off numerous attacks, they were airlifted out in December. Meanwhile, the Rwandans and RCD had been expanding in the east and the Ugandans created a new rebel army, the Movement for the Liberation of Congo or the MLC, and they began to take land in the north. And these rebels, foreign troops and government forces raided villages and killed a great deal of people throughout 1998 and early 1999. But in April 1999, the RCD fractured when their leader, Ernest Wamba Diawamba, moved his base from Rwandan-controlled Goma to Ugandan-controlled Kisangani. This drove a further wedge between Uganda and Rwanda, and that month Museveni made peace with Kabila. The following month, Wamba was ousted as the head of the RCD, and the leaders in Kisangani would go on to form the forces for renewal and fight against their old allies. Plus, to further complicate the situations, the Ugandans created a new province in the northeast called Ituri, and this started an ethnic conflict between the Lendu and Hama inhabitants. So, with all sides unable to make real gains, they agreed to sign the Lusaka ceasefire agreement in July 1999. Yet, the fighting in the vast, ungovernable country continued. For instance, even the Ugandans and Rwandans clashed in Kishangani in July, and in November, the Rwandan-backed rebels launched a major assault on the capital, but were driven back. So, UN troops were sent to implement the ceasefire in early 2000, but could do little to stop the fighting, and all foreign troops were accused of exploiting the resources of Congo. Kabila then tried to launch his own offensive into the Equator province, but the Ugandan-backed MLC drove them back in the summer of 2000. Then, in early 2001, Kabila was shot by his own bodyguard, but who masterminded the assassination is still unknown. His son, Joseph Kabila, was made the new president, and he was more diplomatic than his father, so agreed to meet with the Rwandans to open peace talks. Yet, for Rwanda, their position began to deteriorate, as many of their Tutsi allies began to mutiny against them in 2002, and many in the RCD agreed to join the new president's forces. So, finally in April, the respective parties met in South Africa, and over the next few months came up with a framework for peace. Rwanda agreed to withdraw their 20,000 troops, while the DRC promised to help dismantle the Hutu militias that still operated within their country. And throughout 2002, the different factions agreed to be part of a transitional government, but fighting still continued in places like Ituri. Plus, the MLC, which was formerly backed by Uganda, even conducted a campaign of genocide against the Pygmy people until early 2003. So, the transitional government could do little to disarm the rebels, and it wasn't until 2006 that elections were held. Kabila won the elections, but the war had destabilized the entire country and killed millions, so his rule was somewhat limited geographically. And conflicts in Congo still persist to this day, like the Katanga independence struggle in the south, or the Kivu conflict in the east, 